Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Infina Factory. Gotta say, it's really nice to say that. I absolutely love this game and cannot wait to do the next challenge. Got something to mention though, played around with the settings in the sound a little bit. Now the uh, the voices of the characters when they talk to us. Let's do a test, hey, Dave. Uh, welcome to the barracks. I'm Dave, the operations engineer. That actually sounds like nothing's changed. Uh, nope, yep, yeah, voice volume max, so I might have to tweak this a little bit more. Uh, but you should be able to hear what they're saying a little bit louder. Wish I'd have done that from the beginning, but there you go. Anyway, it's the last uh, puzzle of the heist, so I hope there's lots more puzzles in these two, because the previous campaign had quite a few bits to go through. This one may be a little bit shorter overall. Uh, and after that, there's also custom puzzles. That's probably from the workshop, or that is the workshop. I think that could be really cool, actually, playing some custom puzzles. Anyway, let's focus on the task at hand. We've got to create a new solution to this puzzle right here. So we've got that <laughs> over there and uh, let's have a look around. I don't think we need to do too much exploring for little extras. I just got that feeling that they're not going to be here. Um, anyway, let's listen to Dave. What's what's up now, Dave? This is the last test. When we're done here, we're going to slip into the bunker and take what... Oh, that stopped him from talking. Okay, fair enough. Uh, also, subtitles, which is really good. So we actually get it in the shape right and then it's probably all joined together then we've got to disassemble it as we push it through here and then we've got to reassemble it on the other side oh this is going to be a tricky one i can feel it okay let's go listen to everything dave has to say and i'll have a little think about how we're going to reassemble things down here here we go dave tell us what's going on this is the last test when we're done here we're going to slip into the bunker and take whatever they have likely to be a lot of useful equipment. Your job is to get it all out of there, so you'll be coming with us. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. Okay, I wasn't really paying attention to what Dave was saying. I've got more important things to do. <laughs> um, here's what I'm thinking, first of all. If we put them out in the order they need to be reassembled, which is potentially a thing we can or can't do, I would like to hope that we could do it that way. Um, then when three of them get moved into here, we push them along, the next three go along, and when the final three get pushed out, so let's build a little bit of a platform. Now we'll need all of that, depending on how we weld them we might not, thinking about block school here. Um, so when they get pushed out, that's because we've got a row of three, so then a row of three is going to sit here, that's fine, then the next three come in. Um, so we'd need another block here, however, once there's the third row that gets pushed over then we can take this thing away now based on where that is I think we might be able to get away with transporting it like that and there's probably something really complicated that I haven't thought about here um, but then yeah that should work in theory so then we would need some welding units which I think would go up top so let's open our menu because we need the downwards facing welder and each one that comes in needs to weld with the one in front of it, that will do it. And when they get pushed over they need to weld across. And that will do that, which I think means you could get away with not having um, a block there. <laughs> that looks like it works, and I tell you what, I feel pretty confident about that, but I've often learned that when you're confident about something it doesn't quite work out. Um, so what I think we should do is have a quick go at just guessing how we're going to push the things through here and not really worry too much about how they get assembled on the other side so that way we can sort of see if what's happening on the other side would work if we were to send them through correctly um, and then we can get a bit of an idea of what's going on here it's actually going to be quite tricky I think it might involve some sensors and uh, and stuff like that actually let's take away these ones and I think we want to go at the same height so we want to shovel it directly shovel it <laughs> such a strange term um, yeah, shovel it in directly like that, and then maybe when it reaches a certain point. So, imagine this thing is free along. First one goes in, second one goes in, third one goes in. So we need to be one block over. That's when... What height is that? Yes, we're one block higher. That's when we have this thing that says... Oh no, wait a minute, we're going to push it over there. Um, so then we want something to send it backwards, which may or may not work. Actually, it would work because... I'll tell you what, let's see it in action. <laughs> Because this is going to be a little bit of a test. Right, so one, two, three. Yeah, kind of worked a little bit and then it sort of didn't work. So let's stop that. 
Uh, buttons, which one am I supposed to press? There we go. If I do... No, we definitely need two of those conveyors there. But that might cause a bit of an issue. In fact, it would definitely cause a bit of an issue. So where's where's the spot that the blocks haven't gone through yet? I don't think there is one. Right, I think what we need to do is to push it further across. So let's say we not worrying about... Oh, pressing the wrong keys again. Block sc score. And we go like this. And then like... Not there. <laughs> like that. Okay, so let's see what happens now. Blocks go through, comes across. That actually worked like really different how I thought it would. Um, which makes me wonder, can we get away with putting a conveyor here like that? Is that going to help the situation? <laughs> kind of almost does, doesn't it? It feels like I'm not understanding the logic of what's going on there. But if I were to play around with it, you could probably um, get this to, to do it all in one go. Let's just watch it one more time. Yes, okay, I didn't understand that at all. Right, so now I'm going to make a cut and I'll see if I can get this thing to work. And as soon as I said that, I realised, hey, we should go around to the other side and see what's going on here. And as you can see, we are doing really well over here. There's nothing wrong with that at all, is there? Right, so let's see what happens now. I'm holding down fast forward. Did my idea over here work? Ooh, that's interesting. I know what that means. It means this welder needs to be somewhere else. It needs to be over here. Which means we also need one there, which I'm not sure really want to. If we take that one away, it's not going to work. So, okay, we'll have four of them like that. That'll do. Let's see this thing in action. Good. Good. <laughs> <clears throat> and they actually came out in the same configuration. What? Right, but then the next bit messes up. It does it opposite, actually. Wow, that's fascinating. So it's going to reject that one. Right, so that means not only did this work, but the way that we did it on the other side, they actually went through in the correct order. I sort of like assumed that they weren't because of the way this was going through. Red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. Um, so we just need a way of pushing in that last one. Do you know what? I've sussed out how to do it already. I didn't even need to make a cut here. We've done this in one go. I need to have more faith in myself. Um, what we'll do is simply put that there and this here. Now if that needs to be raised a little bit because the next one's coming in sooner than expected, I don't know, but let's see what happens. Oh, I love it! It worked! Amazing! Which means we can go through to this side and see that it's been... Oh my god, we have done that all in just a few minutes. That's absolutely fantastic. Okay, and then the next one comes through correct and I don't think there's any way this can really mess up now. So the only thing I can comment on is if we'd have built that a little bit closer, we could have reduced block score and possibly done it a little bit smoother on the other side as well. So do I want to redo this, improve the score and get a better block speed? Let's see. Uh, I said block speed. <laughs> block score. Let's see where we're at. Do you know what? I'm going to do it. I'll be right back and we'll see what improvements I can make. So what you're seeing there is about the only thing I think could have been improved. If they were on the ground, they could have been spread out a little bit further from one another. So that's ever so slightly better. And let's continue back to the barracks. And I've got to clear my throat. Okay, all done. <laughs> right, so... Oh no, we've unlocked two more puzzles. Terrestrial Surveyor and Anti-Javelin Satellite. That sounds absolutely crazy. Okay, let's do it. What's going to happen? Oh, some of the traps are hanging out in this area then, are they? Okay, that's cool. That's good to know. Um, so we've got one of these portals to work with again. This is the this is what we need to get assembled on this side over here, by the looks of it. So, which one are you? Can I talk to you? Apparently not. You're ignoring me. Let's talk to Dave. This is it. Your big moment. Oh, it's my big moment. That's all he's saying. Oh, right. We've got, oh, what's going on here? Oh, God, all these guys have been shot. Oh, dear. That is not good. Well, I don't think these guys are very nice. <laughs> uh, I wonder if there's any Easter eggs around here. That's what I'm looking for. We've got another chappy or two over here. Do either of you talk? They Nia talks. Fight. I almost feel bad about it. Well, you did kill them. <laughs> uh, oh, that's one of those food things. Yeah, yeah, it is. Don't think we're actually going to need that. Interesting. Okay. So, basically... It comes through assembled, we've got to disassemble it, 
and reassemble it, which, you know, we've, we've done that a little bit now. This is going to get a lot more complicated, and I'm already thinking there's going to be a particular way we probably want to approach this, but um, we'll start off with the conveyors, trying to keep uh, a low block score as well. So uh, that's actually, how long is this thing free? So we can actually go one block further forwards, and then it will get dropped down onto here, so you can have one block there. And then just doing things the efficient way, space it out by two each time, which is all good. Uh, does it go up a block here? It does, doesn't it? So we could put blocks under each of these, um, but I think what we'll just use is... Okay, decided to go with this. We're getting to the point where this is no longer too tricky. So let's press the play button, speed this bit up. And watch this thing in action. So I hadn't gone much further than that. <laughs> uh, so we need another conveyor belt over here. And then actually things do get a little bit tricky, I think. Because we can have things sort of in the wrong place. So let's, uh, let's speed this up all the way. I wish it was a faster than fast sometimes. Like a super fast. But, oh, that's kind of not the way I wanted them to go through. So maybe we need another one here. Let's try this. It's a case of trial and error at the moment, isn't it? Oh, that's not what I want. It still does that. Okay. So is there any creative solution I can think of to stop that from happening? Uh, I would have to make that the last bit to go through. So maybe what we do... Oh, do you know what? And already I'm thinking, hey, the order that we send them through in is really going to affect what we're doing um, on the other side. So... I was thinking for a second there, what if we sent like everything but the middle first, but the way they come out is probably going to be a pain to assemble. I've got to say, it, I am a little bit stumped at this point. So I've made a really moronic decision here now that I've spotted it. So check this out, we're going to get close to doing this and then nope. And we can't make it go any closer without messing up the other thing. I've made a limitation for myself here, which is that we elevate this thing up like right next to this which has been an issue every single time because when I want to turn it around and push it back into here which is going to be the easy thing to do uh, this is all in the way right so what we need to do is probably take this back a whole step at least um, so I'm going to have you point in that direction then this thing is going to be there um, which then means we probably want another tower here um, as that bit's going to be a little bit different. So, what was it? One, two, three up to this height, although it's one block across. What am I doing? <laughs> and uh, then you've got that thing there. Whoops, that didn't work. I'll probably be able to make this a little bit more compact. Also, I think all of that up there is going to be quite unnecessary as well. And then that thing to push it across. So, let's get rid of all of that. And that looks like it would just work as is. So, let's bring it across. Yep, and now we've got all this extra space to work with. Right, so when we get to that bit right there, rather than turning that way, we want to turn the opposite way. So let's end this. Uh, what would it be? E to rotate. And then we want to put a block here and one of those like that. And that should be it. So now we don't need any of this. And that might just be a problem solved. I've got a feeling like there might be one or two blocks here you don't really need as well. Like those ones would reduce the uh, footprint a little bit and also how many blocks do we have here we have like two you see you could trade off those two and have them connect across there that doesn't exactly reduce the block score so we'll leave that alone and now this should work in theory and it did work which is fantastic but now we got a nightmare to work with on the other side when it comes to reassembling this thing I don't even know how to get started here, and I don't think talking about it is going to help me too much. I need to scratch me noggin and think here, and uh, and try, yeah, try and get something going. <laughs> okay, this amused me. <laughs> what a weird little machine. I wonder if that could ever be useful. Let's attach that to the ground so it can work correctly. So over on this side, what we're trying to do is bring through the items and sort of swap around the first groups of free to be welded and once those are done then create a system that pushes the rest of the items somewhere else it's going to be so difficult and it is taking me a lot of time to figure this out so those go down then these ones should go across again 
Right, and then that's extended and caused an issue here, which is fine. But only two blocks got through. You see, it'd be nice to add a custom delay here. There may be a way to sort of add a delay, but not one that I'm particularly aware of. If this was all sort of lower down, we have more space downwards, then um, then that could like fall on top of the pusher. But yeah, anyway, so this sort of half works here. And I guess the problem is, what else exactly can we detect? Because when those three become a three, if we put a sensor on that, you know, it activates for the first two times. So my hoping here was that three of them would have come through, and then they would drop into the middle, and then we could push them away. I, I don't even know. I don't even know. Well, this one's a real grind, but I think I've made a little bit of a breakthrough here. I want to show you this setup, which I've changed and tweaked several times. So we can get them into the right order using this, but then everything goes wrong because we kind of need to detect something happening before these last two blocks going through and there's nothing unique that's happening and the only way that I can think of doing that is if we change up what we're doing altogether. How we're going to do that I'm not exactly sure. Just staring at this though, I reckon if we were to change this right here to uh, a conveyor then that's going to push the first block there, the second block will join with it and get pushed along and then the third block will get pushed along as well but if we have a conveyor there then I think it might not join with the fourth block which is what I want to find out because I think what we're going to need to do is push them all across so they're spaced out a little bit further but it means when the third one or the second one gets to a certain point we can create a signal by detecting something and uh, and then yeah and then like changing whatever's going on over here so that we can send the last two items somewhere else. Now that's promising. I do want to mention though, if there was a sensor that faced upwards, that would be brilliant because a moment ago I created something that would have worked perfectly provided there was a sensor that faced upwards and there wasn't one, which is unfortunate. Uh, but that in theory should work and I'm just thinking, let's throw down a couple more blocks here and just sort of see it unravel a little bit here so we can say when exactly this unique event is going to happen. Alright, so I'm going to pause it now because it's when this third one comes through, like that, that we then need to change something. So these blocks would have reached a position over here um, that the other ones won't, possibly. And then we'll push them all off and they'll have to assemble themselves. Something along those lines. And then these two blocks will get sent somewhere else. And that will be the compl complex bit out of the way because then we could assemble these bits, join it with the other ones, Put it in that thing over there, and hopefully it's going to be as easy as that. Probably isn't though, just saying. Well, a little bit of a defeated update. Uh, I'm going to have to take a break from doing this. Uh, I've developed this habit of pressing Z, which is undo, and it's really annoying because I do that when I try and fly down, and uh, and then I undo something I did. I am having like the worst luck getting the timing. Well, not luck, I just can't quite figure out the timing for all of this and everything that I'm trying just runs into one problem or another. So that one that we had last time, um, the problem was after it sends the second lot of blocks through, it joins them all together which breaks the thing entirely. So now I'm sort of going back to square one and no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a break <laughs> because this thing is exhausting. Okay, decided to reevaluate how all of this is done. We now have uh, the correct pieces in the wrong positions. Let's go down so you can see uh, they're sort of lined up correctly. There's room for us to actually have conveyor belts here and be underneath this part of the contraption which means we should be able to sort of move them along, weld them together at the correct point and then move them forward. So that's fine. Um, then it's about the two blocks that follow which are at this point here. And by the way, way the way that I got this to work why it wouldn't work before is because of this thing retracting. So we have two sensors over here so it lasts a little bit longer and allows that to fall down. The question now is when we hook this up, this is like the moment of truth because if this doesn't work I'm probably gonna have to play around with putting sensors elsewhere in the contraption but if this also and now we don't need those <laughs> um, if this also will retract that at the right time the second two blocks may just fall down there Right, moment of truth, hold down fast forwards, I'm going to be very happy if this works. They go through, they go through. 
Right, and one of those, one of those did. So I think we need to hook this up to something separate. Yeah, so kind of promising. Uh, why won't that stop? There we go. Kind of promising. So we're going to have to disconnect this. And we're going to have to put some sensors somewhere else. Or maybe have uh, a combination. Cause it, oh, wait a minute. It only sent one through. And our plan is to put, let's see, conveyors down here to send that unit straight along. Which means that we won't need these two. Which means it has to be hooked up to the ground somewhere else. So we'll do that over here on a temporary basis. Right, and then let's say we add a sensor down here. Where is the sensor block? I've actually removed it, haven't I? Okay, this thing is to go underneath there. Oops. Uh, did I rotate that and then... No, you are supposed to face that direction. Right, so this um, will then directly and only go to that one right there. Okay, so... <laughs> Let's see if that does the trick. Please do. It would be amazing. What is going on there? Why did that not extend? Is it because it's attached to this sensor down here now? Yes. Apparently having a sensor below that means that thing can't extend, which uh, makes everything else a pain. No, it doesn't because we can just put a sensor over here. Where is my sideways facing sensor? Did I put a downwards facing one there a moment ago? That might have been the issue. But either way, that will do the same thing. So, there we go. Okay, right. Now's the moment of truth. Because after this, I'm probably uh, out of ideas. That didn't work. Okay, real moment of truth here. Because uh, this is how the sensor works, by the way. We need two of them like this. What I missed is the one at this height. Um, and that's enough for the two things to get separated. Bam, both of them got separated, and then down here, oh, did you see that? It got welded together. Um, I made it so that basically everything will drop onto the tracks, and then when the last one comes through, they can get welded and moved forward. So, like, the rest should be really easy now, basically. Well, I just accidentally pressed P. <laughs> uh, what does P mean? Platform? Places where blocks can land? I don't know. Anyway, I've got the solution, I do believe. I just gave it a quick test. So over on this side, we assemble those blocks together like this. And the timing here is perfect because the first block's going to arrive here before the second block is below. But as this arm retracts here, it's just enough time for the second one to join. They get welded, they br get brought over here. Um, so what we do at this point is the different... Um, sets of let's say wheels that come through on either side get elevated up and they wait at this space over here so if you have a look at where those are it's not until the one in the middle is in place that they get pushed off to the side they drop down and get shuffled into that thing over there so how does the middle bit get assembled well it gets pushed up like this and the reason that this is like it is is because it's all a bit awkward to weld something that's in the middle of the other bits so for that reason um, we bring it across it comes up it gets welded then it gets pushed across the middle, all three get welded together and that's it. So, let's see this thing first of all fast, then we're going to slow it down now because here's where the middle one comes up and then this thing from the side. And bam, it goes through and it drops down. So let's see this bit in action over here. There you go, it pushes out the two to the side, assembles them, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> assembles them over there, brings it around here, it's just, it's awesome. Now it's probably not as compact as it could be. Uh, the efficiency of solving these bits, you know, isn't too great with me. I have to sort of break it down a lot, get it to sort of each bit to come along somewhere and somehow make it work. So it's not the most elegant of solutions. Anyway, let's speed this thing up. We got six, five, four, three, two, and one to do. And that was definitely on the tougher side, but I managed to get there and it was very, very fun and, and challenging, which is really good. So, um, let's continue to the barracks, and I guess there's not too much else to say. Our score on that wasn't too bad. I like the, the block one. I like that that was low, and slightly above average on cycles. The next one is the anti-javelin puzzle. Can you guess it? We're going to do that one in the next episode. So, as always, if you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like. The support is appreciated, and hope you enjoy Infinifactory. We'll be back soon for another episode. So, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.